What's up there workforce, Chris here with work to game and it's time for another community feedback, this time on the Final Fantasy VII upcoming release. Brian and I put out two videos. The first was my impressions and why I'm really excited about the game, um, just overall impressions, just good news. Uh, and then the second was actually a collab after he had a chance to play the demo. Since his PlayStation died, he came over and borrowed mine. And uh, we sat together. If you haven't seen us both on camera at the same time, it does happen. Very rare. And uh, we had a chance to talk about why um, there are some people that are frustrated with the demo and kind of where it may differ from us. Just kind of the general response to there is a set of people who are frustrated that this is a remake and not like more of a, a traditional remaster um, and that, it, and that it, it's drastically changing the game and they weren't a fan. Uh, and so we kind of talk about whether or not Final Fantasy VII is, is all good news, uh, even though just from you, our two perspectives, we're really excited. Um, so... I'd like to dive into that comments section. I do want to first of all say a huge thanks to all of the growing number of YouTube members. Um, now that we stream all of our time over on work to play or still on the Twitch channel, um, you don't necessarily get like badges or anything. It's just something you do that supports the channel. Gives you some special access to Discord, but we've largely made Discord available to everybody. Um, and so I just wanted to say thank you. It does make a difference in Brian and I's lives. We're both self-employed. And so, you know, things like that make it easier for us to spend time on the channel or to spend resources on the channel if we need something like a new microphone or, or anything like that. Uh, and we really appreciate it. So just a huge thanks to you guys. And with that, let's dive in. Uh, so Aaron Mason, what people were expecting was upgraded graphics with the same turn-based system, the same story, and all as as one game. If you think I'm paying a minimum of 180 quid plus the price of a PS5 for this garbage, you have another thing coming. Um, I, I think expectations is a big thing here. I think the word remake... Um, if, if that kind of becomes the standard, uh, it, it is a totally different game. This is not a typical remaster. This is not WoW Classic. This is not um, a re-release of a nostalgic thing. This is more like when they go back and remake the film with a different cast. Um, and, and drastically different even then. Um, this really is taking, it seems like, from everything we're hearing, this is really just taking the first bit of that first game and blowing it up into its own game and having a chance to explore that deeper. And with that came a totally new combat system, a totally new way of looking at the game, and it's a drastic overhaul. So I think there is going to be some frustration from people that throughout the time that we've known Final Fantasy was coming, uh, Final Fantasy VII were coming, that, that this is more different than they expected and um, the idea that we're gonna have to pay for full price titles along the way whether or not we're getting full priced games um, is very frustrating if you just want to have the Final Fantasy 7 experience again you expect to pay for it as one game even if they're able to turn it into a series of, of full-fledged games full 60 hour games 40 hour games whatever you define as a complete game um, People don't necessarily want to pay for that. They just wanted one. And I'm sure that at some point there will be a complete edition or not. And I'm not, I'd be, I say sure. Uh, it would not shock me if that's ever a thing that's done. It depends. We don't really know much about if they're going to be doing those through a form of DLCs on top of this. If it's an expansion or they own their own thing. Um, it's it's hard to say, but I know where this frustration is coming from. And I think it, it hits on a lot of where people are starting to get a little bit frustrated with the Final Fantasy VII, even if um, they did like the demo. Uh, RM409, hey, like your video, guys, hyped for the remake. While we wait, I just had an idea, and it, it's something to ponder. While the hype train is rolling, I thought I'd throw it out there. Would love to see either a live action or Advent Children style movie or Netflix series like The Witcher uh, of the Final Fantasy VII story. Not sure how it would all work out, uh, but just, just hit me and you guys were the first ones I thought of happy pondering. Um, I, I think final fantasy's always put out great content and, uh, even when they get beyond games and I, I would like this too. I think there is something to the final fantasy seven story where as we explore it deeper, um, there are more than one side. So if something like the Witcher, where you can kind of flip perspectives and, and flip to the view of, say, a security guard who has these eco-terrorists coming into his place of work, and then maybe what a citizen would feel like, and then 
maybe, you know, just ponder, like looking at all the different things, right? If what the plant's extracting, like, what is that used for? Is it, is it just power? Is it, you know, like looking at it from a different angles, I think there's a lot here and I, I'm, I'm all for this. So I just wanted to kind of, uh, signal boost this comment and just see what you guys thought. Like if there was a final fantasy seven non-game content to come with it, we got a Netflix series or whatever. Um, do you think you'd want that to be more episodic? Do you think you'd want it to be its own standalone movie? Maybe just a mini movie. Like we've seen things like halo do things like this. Final fantasy, of course, is very good at supporting things like this. Um, what would you guys want to see? And like, how would you want that shot? And who would you want in charge of it? Uh, dragon spheres. I like the changes and people should really just be grateful we're getting a remake at all. Also, if it's not exactly what people want, uh, it's still if it's still good, does it really matter? It's also not logical to expect a game from 1997 in a remake of 2020 to not have a bunch of changes. I think the game would be a lot worse if it was exactly pixel for pixel to the original with just upgraded graphics. I'd argue that's not really a remake, just a remaster. I think the difference in those words is key. Remake and remaster. Um, and yes, they've updated it for the times. We play games differently now, and you know, you may have heard Brian and I kind of talk about it, and there are two ways to kind of restore something. There's a way to restore something to its former glory, a by a by numbers vehicle, um, for example, a hot rod that literally has all its original parts, everything's been restored, and it runs exactly as it did. There's also rebuilding it to its intent. Um, and so if you have a hand-me-down piece of furniture in your family, as it breaks, you may use machined parts or something like that to replace it to make it stronger and better than it was because that family member always wanted it to serve a function and you want that function to be carried on. Uh, and so the, a remake, a remaster feels more like the first one. A remaster feels more like in a museum, we're going to keep it protected under humidity, perfect to be enjoyed for all of time. Um, and it will always be, you know, George Washington's coffee table or whatever there for you to see in the Smithsonian. Uh, and that's a remaster. We're updating it to today's consoles so you can play it again exactly as it was. That's what World of Warcraft Classic did. That's what a lot of these games, we see a Nintendo game come out and be pushed to the Switch, but it runs exactly like it did with as few changes as possible to be upgraded to what new controllers have or anything like that but it is original in as many ways as possible, as opposed to a remaster where you go back and you revisit a series and you could drastically change it. You could come back and say, you know what? I think they would have used this graphics engine had they had it available at the time. Uh, and that's a chance to go back and kind of follow the intent of what you believe the original designers to be feeling, um, whether or not you're able to access them. So I think as we go back and remaster games older and older, uh, there will come a point when you can't go back and ask anybody who was even remotely tied to the original production of that game. And that's more what they went with here. And it's a chance to revisit Final Fantasy VII in its setting. And there's going to be a lot. The skeleton is kind of kept in place. And then they're going to rebuild it out from there. Um, and I think if it's good, the general population won't, won't care. A good game is a good game. And it pretty much forgives anything. Um, if it's not good, then it's going to be something they point at and say, this is why it failed. Uh, so it's a big risk for them to take. And I, I think it's awesome that they're giving it the production value that they wanted. Um, unfortunately, that will only look good in hindsight if it works out. Uh, otherwise, it will look like needless risk and, and that they caused this, this failure, even though I, I, I mean, the intent was good, and so far, everything we've seen looks like it's going to land. We'll just have to see. Uh, Arthas, lol, fake gamers calling themselves journalists is why I never read anything from those losers. So I don't know if you're talking about us. Um, I don't know if you're talking about a different publication that we, maybe we referenced. Um, Brian and I do not call ourselves journalists. So if you are talking about us, just clearing that up. Um, but the the... The fake gamers was actually the part of this comment is the reason I pulled it. Um, I think that's a comment that's been thrown around a lot lately as the definition of a gamer gets broader. Um, I think growing up, we always thought, man, it'd be awesome if everybody enjoyed games and I, I wish everybody could, could enjoy this thing I enjoy. Uh, the problem is that in the process of seeking that, um, games have changed. A huge, huge portion of the market are mobile gamers. A huge, huge portion of the industry is supported by microtransactions. Um, 
the definition of a gamer is changing and the definition of a game is changing and what is typical and all of that has shifted. And if you are somebody who hasn't necessarily wanted to shift in the same direction or shift at all, um, that can be very frustrating. But I don't think that that makes gamers who game differently than you any less gamers. Um, if I only like horror movies, people who are standing in line with me at the theater to see a romantic comedy are just as much movie buffs as I am and just as much people who support the movies and like the movies. And so I, I think as we, we look at people who maybe just have a differing opinion than us, um, I would say be careful just immediately dismissing their way of enjoying something. Maybe they don't game as hardcore as you. Maybe they don't game as often, but it doesn't make them any less of a gamer. And I think games are something that can can act as a form of entertainment that can transcend politics, that can transcend religion and race and gender and even economic disparity. You can have millionaires and you can have people who are living paycheck to paycheck, working an hourly job, playing in the same game. And it just, in the vast majority of games, there is no difference between those people, um, regardless of walk of life, regardless of where they're at. You, you can have people with learning disabilities and you can have people who just had a rough day and, and, and literally everything from something small in their life that defines it to something major in their life defines it. It is just such a great equalizer and we can all just enjoy this thing together. Um, and maybe we can't enjoy the same games cause we're not the same people, but gaming as a whole has room for just about everybody. Uh, and that's really cool. As for the kind of journalist side, um, journalism and gaming has always had kind of a weird relationship. So I don't know where you guys get your news. Um, I get more and more of it from people who are not journalists. And, and I say that in that they were never formally trained. They don't have a degree in it. They were never trained in any form of like working for a major journalism outlet where they would have been in kind of a, a mentor type relationship where they had somebody kind of guide them to the principles of, of journalistic integrity and what to report and when and how to avoid fear mongering and all these things that in theory, um, traditional mainstream publications should follow. They don't always follow. Um, but in theory, they should be capable of a higher standard than what maybe just a YouTuber puts out. And uh, it doesn't always feel that way. Uh, but I am aware that at the end of the day, there there aren't, most YouTube channels are published by the same guy you see on the camera. I am editing this video. I am publishing this video. There is no editor to look over the things I say. There is no legal team to confirm that what I'm saying is okay. There is no researcher or anybody else doing any any background for me. It's It's all me. I pulled these comments from a video I made with my own opinion. I'm exerting my own opinion. I'm going to edit this video in Adobe Premiere. I'm going to upload it to my own YouTube channel that I share with Brian, and, and it's going to go right to you guys. And that's not nearly the layers of protection that something like a New York Times or a CNN or a Fox News or ABC or any other, The Guardian, whatever news source you trust or don't trust, they have so many other layers of protection um, and so when they get it wrong, there's a larger level of frustration in my mind than if just a YouTuber gets it wrong, but the information's still out there just the same. Uh, so just kind of letting you know, I, I don't know if you're also saying since you read, I don't know if it's, I think we referenced an article in there talking about, um, the frustrations around final fantasy seven and like, I, I don't know this whole comment. I didn't know if it was directed at us or if it was directed at a publication we referenced. Um, but I would just say like, when it comes to publications, I do get frustrated. Um, I do disagree with them often, but I still think it's important that they're out there. And, uh, I'm, I'm really just generally supportive of the idea that, that as long as they're trying to get it accurate, I'm glad there are more publications, not less. I wish there were more gaming YouTubers, not less. Um, more would be better. That's just my kind of thought on it. Thought it was an interesting comment. I couldn't really tell exactly where it was directed. So I'm, I'm sure, I'm sure it was met well. Uh, chapter house, just another example of companies using our nostalgia to prop up a half done job. We're going to release the remake as a 47 part series, which will definitely improve the game. No, thanks. I'll pass. Um, there is a, that's another double-edged sword. So just like the last comment, like 
if they don't make the game, it's because they don't support their fans and they're not doing what we want. And, and they're not making the kind of games we want. We want this to, you know, be a remaster. We wanted this game re-released. And there's a whole section of the population that's been begging for this game and hyped about it. But then when they do release it, there's immediately this, they're just cashing in on our nostalgia and all that. I will say to take a fraction of this game and to put the amount of work and the amount of delays and the amount of time that they have in this, um, to put out what looks like it's going to be a full-fledged game by every definition. Um, if their goal was just to exploit us, they are not very good at it. Uh, this feels like they, they really did put a lot of time, effort, and, and care into this. Uh, so if we're going to call out studios for it feels like they're just cashing in on IP uh, and they're not doing the work, um, I, I think that if you levy an accusation like that against a game like this then you're diluting your ability to call out a studio when they actually do seem to be a little bit exploitive or like they've cut some corners or something like that um so if we if we cry out at every single studio that every game is just a money grab then that then they they kind of ignore it as opposed to if we only pick out the two or three that are just egregiously money grabs in a year that means something that matters um, so, and then, and, and I think you're one of the people that has said that we delete your comments and stuff. So just to make that abundantly clear, Brian and I, as a general rule, don't delete comments. Uh, the YouTube filter grabs a lot of stuff, especially foul language. Um, it's gotten smarter about things like death threats and stuff like that, where it has missed those in the past, the super egregious across the line death threats, um, either towards us or another, another member of the community. Um, those are what we take down, but people that say we made a bad video, people that say they disagree with us, people that are having a conversation, which does sometimes get a little bit heated in the comments section, that all stays up. Uh, we really don't police it that heavy. We encourage the conversation as long as the conversation is remaining somewhat productive. Um, just calling somebody a bunch of names and degrading them into nothing doesn't move the conversation forward. And so there are times we pull that down. Um, but I, I don't believe we don't ever just pull something down because like, especially not because we disagree with it. That would defeat the whole purpose of having conversational videos to follow up on follow up on opinion based videos where we ask for you to share your side of the argument uh troku glad you enjoyed it but for me it's not worth supporting the devs on this one it wasn't fun enough to justify the changes in my opinion i'll personally be buying the game used so i won't be counted in their sales statistics um i i think this is a valid a valid thing right you have to put your money where your mouth is and if you don't support this then don't buy it the other side of that is if you say, man, if they make a remaster of Final Fantasy VII, I'll buy it. And you post it on their Twitter page every single day. And you send in handwritten letters with a crayon drawn picture of you and Cloud hanging out. And then you don't buy this game. Then you just gave them all this evidence to the, what the market was going to do. And then you, you turned that into a lie. Uh, so as long as you stick to your guns, this is a very valid, reasonable way to think, right? I'm glad other people enjoyed it. It's not for me. I'm not going to support it. That's my vote. And the market as a whole will all make hopefully an equally reasonable decision. And that as a whole will inform all studios that are watching this game closely. Hey, games like this succeeded. What can we learn from that? Should we do it again? Um, perfect. It's what they put out demos for. It was a full-fledged demo. It was, a, it was like 45 minutes to an hour. Enjoy it. It's what it's there for. Um, give them feedback. Hey, you know, it wasn't fun enough. Okay, well, what about wasn't fun enough? You know, or don't. But like, if if you're going to give feedback, my only caveat to this comment would be like, hey, um, as people kind of post things, like if you're like, oh man, if they just let you play as this other character, I would buy it. Cool, totally reasonable. However, like if that goes on to be like some Reddit petition with 50 billion people saying, I agree, then if they make that playable, that should result in that many additional sales. And if all those people just move the goal line five more inches and say, well, yeah, but they'd also have to make me able to wear this outfit. And then they add that. Yeah, but they'd also have to let me have this mini pet. And then at some point they're gonna be like, no, you guys, every time you say you need something, we do it and then you don't pay us. So like, I'm not gonna listen to you anymore. Uh, but yeah, I think this was a very reasonable comment. I think it summed up a lot of people who tried the demo and it wasn't for them. 
Uh, I personally enjoyed the demo, but for people that didn't, that's what demos are there for. Don't get this game if you did not enjoy the demo. Horse Attacks. I only ever liked the sprite version of Cloud. Seeing him in a real life type game with that giant sword was too much. It is a preposterously big sword. Uh, I think the game was absolutely stunning. We'll see how it holds up as we get over the whole thing. Um, but it's definitely a drastic change from that more like 8-bit. And, and that, as time has moved, that doesn't mean we've given that up. I mean, you see like uh, Octopath Traveler still had a very like eclectic old school look to it so games like that still come out especially from indie devs um so i would encourage you to to continue to support games like that and uh and and if this game isn't for you that'll show in the sales numbers uh aaron anybody who thinks this is bad needs their head examined and this is the other side of it i i do think that when we put out the you know is final fantasy 7 bad that thumbnail and everything's everybody's like how can you not like this game and and brian are like well for the two of us we do like this game but that doesn't mean that that people saying that they're not going to get it are wrong. Um, that's totally reasonable. If you don't like, you don't have to like every game that comes out to market. Uh, I personally really look forward to going hands on with this game, and I really look forward to playing it. Um, and I don't get to make time for single player games very often. I just don't seem to find the time. And this is one that I'm I'm really hoping to be able to spend a very long time with. Uh, and I'm personally really looking forward to. Fake Democracy, I'll be the guy, is one of the very few people who thought the original 7 wasn't that hot to begin with. It's not my final, my, my favorite Final Fantasy game either. Uh, mine is 10. So this isn't the one like when I think back to, to must-haves. Uh, I know a lot of people like it. I'm with you. Uh, I played two better RPGs that same year, but I don't want to derail. This looks amazing. And if it ever comes to PC, it's an easy day one. Um, I think PlayStation kind of locked this stuff down, but I imagine it'll go out. We're seeing lots of drama around when a Sony title gets released to other titles lately with uh, Horizon Zero Dawn. And uh, yeah, I don't I don't see why this wouldn't come after the first year uh, to PC. And my question is, if there's a second chapter or whatever they want to call it, um, is that going to then say that comes out at the one year point? Is that then, are you always a year behind, like being a season behind something on Netflix? Um, I don't know. So I, seven was not one of the defining games of my childhood. I don't know what else I played that year. Uh, I didn't go back and try to like correlate why maybe it just didn't hit me as hard. Um, there was a lot of good games from my childhood that, that meant a lot to me. It's a game I played. It wasn't something that like, I distinctly remember a lot of, um, yeah, I, I don't know, but I can tell you playing this demo, it's awesome, and I'm really excited about it, and uh, I can't wait to play it. And uh, that's it. That's it. I pulled up the next comment. It's for another video. So there's a hint. We have another uh, community feedback coming up soon, and um, yeah, I hope you guys are staying safe. I know that, that my wife's now working from home, and um, I'm largely working from home, and everybody is going on uh, the time of this filming we're dealing with you know major school closures and things like that uh, around you know fears of, of spreading illness here in the United States and and elsewhere uh, so I hope everybody's staying safe thank you guys so much for hanging out and uh, hopefully you guys get to enjoy a lot more games if you are stuck at home hopefully that's a nice silver lining and I hope for many of you that this is not something that affects your life and it all seems like no big deal and blows right by um, that's a way better option than not being cautious and it going the other direction. So uh, all in all, I, I wish you guys the best. Thank you so much for hanging out. My name's Chris with Work to Game, and I'll see you guys next time.